now that we have this background in here and I'm looking at that, it feels a little stark. So I'm going to use some um, filters. Photoshop includes a series of filters. Some of them are better than others, uh, but sometimes they're, they're quite useful. Like this blur tool is really interesting. Sometimes I use this Gaussian, Gaussian blur and you can kind of see what it does. It's only going to apply it to whatever layer you have um, active or if you had a specific selection made it would only apply it to that selection but you can kind of see it softened that up. I don't know if this is the right um, particular tool to use or not but um, you can make adjustments to it so more or less um, blur is sometimes pretty useful. I think I like that one. Um, there are also uh, artistic filters and if you click on that filter gallery it's going to bring up these artistic filters and in theory these are meant to make it look like um, for example colored pencil and I don't necessarily think that that's particularly true to what colored pencil might look like um, and you can adjust settings to create different effects on here um, but uh, you know sometimes sometimes you can come up with a really nice texture or something that is uh, particularly useful um, and you can zoom in and out if you want to see more of the picture overall um, or if you want to really get in and see some of the detail of that. Um, so sometimes you just kind of have to play through it, um, adjust your settings until you find something that is suitable. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. If I go back to my history, that's what it looked like before. And I think I was just not liking those white specks, and that's, you know, I could have gotten rid of those in multiple ways. But this way I got to show you the filter gallery, and you can use that to um, adjust any of the textures on here. Now it's not going to work necessarily for the textures applied, like on the platforms, how we applied those and on these ribs. But um, if those were... Um, blended together. If we, if we wanted to go ahead and take, for example, the ribs, I could merge these two layers together and they would essentially become one layer. Ultimately, that's probably what I'm going to do, but for right now I'm going to leave them all separate. Also notice since the last video I have organized my layers just a little bit by putting things into groups. So I have all of the parts of the ribs in one group, all the parts of the platforms are in another group, columns, walls, etc. That way I just not always flipping through all the different uh, layers here. I can find them much easier when, when I want to work on them. So from here I want to start applying some depth. Um, not really thinking lighting exactly, but I do want to start making these look like they have some, um, some sense of fading on them, exactly the same as what we did with the curtains. So um, we could do the quick mask like we did uh, with the curtains. I'm going to show you one other way to do something similar, and that will require more layers love those layers. So I'm going to start with column one. It should be that piece right over there. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is select the pixels for that. So I only want selected that edge. And I'm going to create a new, column, new layer and I'm going to call this column one left Fade. All right, so on this one, I'm actually going to create a gradient, and so I'm going to—it's going to be similar to how we did the other. Um, I'm going to make sure that I am. I think I'm going to. This is this is sort of a coolish gray, so I'm going to find a little bit more of a blue gray I can work with here. So I want this color to be connected 
to the overall tone of my finish here. So it's got a little bit of a blue tint to it and I'm going to use the gradient tool. Now this time I want to make sure I'm actually using the gradient that fades to transparent. So this one here goes from the color that is your foreground color to a transparent pixel. And I do want to use the just standard linear gradient and starting somewhere here. Let me drag that straight off. Oh, I went the wrong direction. I right, just undo that. Go this way. So it's kind of backwards from what we did with the quick mask, but um, it will do a similar thing. So we want that dark edge because the we want this front corner to feel like it's the brightest part of the of the uh, column because that's you know it's a square it's on a 45 degree angle looking at us so I can fade off that edge but I also want to fade off the top so with that still selected and I'm just going to do it on the same piece I'm just going to choose the gradient tool again and this time I'm going to go top to bottom or bottom to top yeah top to bottom That was a little bit much. If you, always, if you get too much, you just back it up and undo it and start again. Still a little bit too much. You can also fade this with the opacity here. So if you're getting too much, um, you can always adjust that. There we go. I just didn't need, needed to not go all the way down to the bottom. So it's a little bit darker at the top nice and even and it fades and goes towards the back. So let me show you what this does now. So just looking at it like this, you can already tell that because that gets a little bit darker, it feels like it's fading and receding away. And now the what you didn't have control of with the quick mask is that now you can change the blending mode on this. So um, I really like the multiply mode for this particular um, fade situation here because uh, in the regular mode it's just keeping it normal it tends to um, reduce the texture now because it was a um, translucent it didn't completely do that but with the multiply it darkens it up even more but it also affects those pixels and makes makes them it makes that texture pop through even better so I'm going to go through on these columns and do that same thing for each one. So I'm going to go column one copy. That should be this side here. Hold down my control command key to select it, create a new layer. Column one right. That's good. And it's okay for right now that that's just a little bit, a little bit lighter on that edge there. So I'm going to continue doing the same thing on the rest of them. It's already looking better. Like we're just getting that little bit of toning on there makes everything appear um, more dimensional. So I'm going to do similar treatments on the walls. This time I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I actually rather rather than having it fade to one side or the other I'm going to see if I can get it to kind of fade into the corners as if there's uh, you know, fading around the edges here. So I'm going to close this one up, open up here and select that. So that selects both parts. I think that is my original fill, and we ended up changing the face on this. All right, so since I have those two pieces connected, I'm going to have to go back to my line drawing layer 
and just make a new selection here. Not sure I like that, but again, you can always adjust it by doing just a little bit of erasing in here. I didn't have the shape quite right. Or I can just straight up erase the layer and be done with it. I don't if I really don't like it and start over again. But that works out pretty good just for me. I'm happy with that. Alright, so the next one, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this, and then I'm just going to deselect this area. See how easy that is? Right. New layer. Let's call it upstage right. So because the eat I want to be able to treat the shading on each one of these individually, I'm going to go ahead and just make new selections and keep doing the adding the mask the way I did on the walls and the and the columns here. So I'll need to go to here, I can select that, and then I just need to deselect everything I don't want. It's easiest, easier than having to. Whoops, easier than having to go about uh, expanding the selection and, and all of that. So, all right. So here's my top piece, and all right. For this one, we're going to apply a new layer on top of the pattern layer, and what do we want to call this? Level three. And probably that same color we used in the walls is good because we've got sort of our warm colors going here. Choose our gradient. And then our facings here. I just want to be able to have one side be kind of highlighted, one side be sort of shaded. So if we go to our Stay Bright facings here and select those, I'm going to make sure I go above my texture layer and create a new layer, Stay Bright facing where do we want our light to come? I think we'll have our light come from the other direction. So, um, stay right facing shade. So this time I'm going to just do a fill of this. I'm going to go ahead and use that brown because we'll be able to adjust it later. Um, change us up to let's go with multiply and then bring the opacity way down. That almost looks okay without even doing a highlight on the front facings because, because of the shading we did up there and the shade that we've now put on the facings. Those almost appear to have a nice highlight. I could have gone through on each one of these and done the, done the fade to the corners and all of that as well, but for now I think we will let that go. Oh, look how much nicer that's starting to look. All right, last but not least would be to apply some sort of fade to our ribs. Let me close this file, bring this one open. And I think with these, I am going to go ahead and merge each of these layers together so I'm not dealing with the texture anymore. And so I'm going to select each group right click merge layers
Now, one minor complication with doing that is notice that it has taken on the name of the layer that was up above, which is all of those patterns. So now all of these uh, individual ribs are, um, you know, I don't have the, the names on there. And ultimately, I'd probably go back and fix that. But if I can remember that this grouping, and I can even group them, is rib one. So you can have a group within a group. Okay, so with these, since these are curved, I'm going to want to have some indication on this curve that um, you know the light is hitting it differently than it might be from the sides because the sides are just flat, but the curve is coming on the the essentially the face here. So just remember which one's which. So this one is the side, and this one should be the top. So I'm going to make it so that the side is kind of the highlight. The middle part is going to have a gradient, and the top is probably going to just be um, a little darkened up a little bit so that it is less noticeable. All right, so start with the side on this one. And I think we'll try this levels. If I bring this slider towards the side, I can lighten that up. So the same way we bring the light slider towards the dark pixels, we can darken it. If we bring the dark slider to the light pixels, we can lighten it up. So that gives us a nice even tone. That'll work. Um, I don't even really have to change anything. And I might just go ahead and go to each one of these ribs. All right, let's try on the tops. So I'm going to do levels and go the other way. Let's go to the dark. No. All right, so I'm going to uh, revert back to creating a new layer and using the gradient in the similar way to how I did this on the walls and such. So I'm just going to click new pattern fill. Let's do that. Mm. So rib one is I suppose you could probably you could probably have done that the opposite way with the darker in the middle, but I kind of like it being darker towards the top because that brings the focus more to the middle here. Okay, and I, I guess I've not done my fading on my floor, so let's go find my floor layer. I think this time I will use the quick mask function. Let me try that. Back to levels and that's pretty good. Not sure if I'm bothered yet by how bright these columns are, but I guess we'll find out. 